Oh, are we starting? Is this the thing? I don't we're know. Starting? I think I think the music means that we're gonna start. I guess, I guess we're starting. We're starting. Hey, Jesse, doesn't, doesn't intro music mean starting? Yeah, I guess it does. I I, <laughs> I wasn't ready. Jesse didn't cue us. You sounded weird. Music. That's all. It's <sighs> gonna go Bill O'Reilly on you from Entertainment Tonight or whatever. What do you mean, Sting? What does that mean <laughs> to play us out? <laughs> Play it out. <laughs> I still love the parody of that. Why would I let you write it? You can't even read it. <laughs> uh, just a quick shout out off the top of the show. Breaking news as of literally a couple hours ago. Uh, CJAD 800 in Montreal, part of the Bell Media family, is suggesting or sorry, saying that uh, Montreal's uh, CHUM hospital announces that hockey great Guy Lafleur's lung cancer has returned. So uh, best wishes to Guy Lafleur. Um, you know, he's a fighter, obviously, and hope he continues that and, and uh, wish him the best going forward with, um, with that. That's a tough battle ahead. So shout out to Guy Lafleur and his entire family. Our thoughts are with you. Absolutely. Um, you know, I have to say we have uh, – there is a lot to get to. There's a lot to talk about. A little bit. But, but there's only – it's weird – because the face of the NHL should be completely different. And yet here we are and we've got one or two. I don't, I don't even know if you want to call them major trades. Well, not even that, Adam. Uh, we thought the draft would be done. Right. <laughs> in time for this show. And, and the third round's barely begun. Yeah. Yeah. It's the Leafs have made one. two picks yeah, today. Yeah. And they- they traded down. They traded one of them down for 44. and They traded 44 for 59 and 66, I want to think. You want to talk about a, a, a 54. 59 and 64, I think. And you want to talk about a smorgasbord of news incoming. They have 11 picks today. They've made two. That's I wonder, it. do you think the draft will be done by the end of the show? I don't think so. I don't. Probably not. I don't think there's any possible way that the draft is done by the end of the show. I feel like every year the draft is our, is uh, offer sheets. You know, everyone always hypes it up and they're like, oh, all this stuff's going to happen and all these people are going to get offer sheeted and blah, blah, blah. And then it never does. Every year at the draft, it's this limp thing, you know? We never we never get what we want. I think I no. think the thing is with the draft is it could be. It could be and it is an opportunity that NHL GMs continue to waste to get creative. Um, and what we see every year in other leagues is teams get immeasurably better at the draft. We also see teams swing and miss, but both sides of that are entertaining. Both sides, when people are getting crazy at the draft in the, uh, in the NFL, when people are getting crazy at the draft in the NBA, you see some excitement. The baseball draft is untelevised and absolutely terrifying because it's 48 million rounds. Oh my, oh they literally my draft everybody that's ever played baseball. So I, you know, they they don't televise that for good reason. At least the, the, the so. OHL too. I'm pretty sure all three of us have been drafted. They, we, we just didn't get tell. Really? Oh, we should have player profiles on an NHL then. Oh, that'd be great on on Elite Prospects, which we can get on Elite Prospects Premium, which I ponied up for last night <laughs> because of this, Amira. This year, due to the pandemic, the MLB draft was cut from 40 rounds to five. So there you go. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what will they do without all of those 80 million other players? Yeah, <laughs> the other 35 rounds. You know, what I love about that is Literally. like, hey, the Blue Jays picked up a guy who is top 20 in the other guy's system. Top 20. <laughs> like, A, <laughs> you could That's pick baseball. someone up. You could pick someone up as a Christmas present to them. Yeah, and right. Have it not affect the organization. Yeah. In the slightest. Yeah. It's, it's like, like booking a cameo, but you've been drafted to like, the Mets. Hey, you've we've traded a guy that hit 30 home runs last year for a guy that's 25th in that system. Well, we feel really good about that. And they'll yeah. look at you straight face and say they do. Yeah. Baseball. But with the NHL, it's like, no, best to do nothing. Uh, let's, <laughs> you know, we could do something, but let's not. And we did get a Josh Anderson trade, which we'll talk about. We did get the Matt Murray trade, which we will talk about. But I think we need to start, um, frankly, with the fact that, um, uh, can we just say it, Steve? What? The first round needed some music. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah, man. Yeah. For those Listen, <laughs> Jason Greger had a tweet today that was basically, um, listen, you all complained about not having sports for so long. Can you not complain about 
you know, the way the first round was done. Can you not complain about how long day two of the draft is? Listen, I get it. I don't think it's that fans are ungrateful and fans are not so stupid that they don't understand the fact that it's a pandemic and we're having to do things differently. But there were some genuine LOLs for me last night, just from a technical standpoint. Uh, Like, who is it? Jake Sanderson with the fifth overall pick. The Ottawa Senators select Jake Anderson. Oh, he's on a bit of a a delay there. And then he got a text (laughs) that ruined it for him. (laughs) No, there was the one guy who went eighth to Edmonton who found out that he was drafted on his phone faster than he found out from his feet well, because they aren't aren't television stations usually on like a 10 to 7 to 10, 10 second delay which if that's the case then it defeats the purpose right they're just making for swearing like some some people were instant some people were a solid 10 15 second delay and the i just i just want people to appreciate the undertaking of this draft the fact that so many players are available there's at least 50 right because there's still players who are uh, they have a feed going into their family's home today on, on day two. When I, when I came downstairs for, for the show, there were still like, hey, you know, living room celebrations and everything like that. But when we were doing um, watch parties for old Leaf games uh, during the spring, we had to literally, Sportsnet had to send somebody to Gary Roberts' house with like equipment <laughs> because the internet was no good. So I can't imagine like you got to make sure all these people they they got a they got a camera that works high they got speed microphones internet. that work they got high speed internet it's not gonna cack out like there was um th- th- there was a there was one of the picks last night where I'm like I don't know if we're gonna make it all the way to them announcing who they picked <laughs> it was like not every setup was like the Leafs where you happen to have two of your star players uh, in town uh, uh, setting everything up for you. We get that it's hard, but as a spectacle, I love watching hockey. I love watching the draft. I don't know if there is a movie you could make that I would watch for six hours. Yeah, no, I get what that. This is looking to be, yeah, well, and that's that's okay. I don't mind like it's background. The the second the second through seventh round to me are background television. It's I'm doing my laundry. And I'm folding, you know what I mean? Like I'm doing, it's like a, it's like an extremely long baseball game, which, which is sort of boring. Like it's a pitcher's duel or something. Jesse, you were going to say something. Go ahead. You're mentioning all these negative things, but you forget to mention the positive that Alex Trebek showed up and the Ottawa Senators did a cool. great job. That was really cool. Give credit where credit is due. That was really cool moment. I won't. No, it was good. <laughs> it was really good. It was nice to see that. And you know, I, I think that's the thing is that, that I, I, I don't think it's that, People aren't aware. It's that they're aware it could be better. And it has nothing to do with the in-feed to your home. I think it has everything to do with the things you can control. Like if the pacing music. can be can be better, the music can be better, the excitement from, from everybody can be better. Like it can. And we all know what it looks like without a pandemic. And we know that it was like this without the pandemic. So it's not unfair to say... <sighs> Let's let's zoom it. Let's just let's put it on some steroids here a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You can you can't put the players on steroids, but you can put the broadcast on it a wee bit. So that's just you know that's just the way it is. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. You can put the players on steroids," said all their trainers. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, well, I heard I heard a great line recently. There are no uh, drug tests. There are only IQ tests. Uh, apparently, there's so many what? ways because there's so many ways to mask them. That if you get caught, basically you're stupid. Are oh. you implying that there's a lot of NHL players on steroids? I think a lot of your favorite professional athletes are on something, right. something or other. I don't know. It's, it's not necessarily steroids. You're not going like- to come out like friggin' Mark McGuire with a, you know, it was a little bait having a four foot wide neck there, dude. But <laughs> you know, ah. guys, guys are on something. These days, that guy came out looking like friggin' Psycho Sid from the old WWF. Every at bat, <laughs> and it was a little suspicious after a while. Just a little, yeah. Uh, just a trade to announce here: the Oilers have acquired the hundredth and hundred seventy or hundred twenty sixth pick for the seventy sixth pick. Okay, from the San Jose Sharks. So this the is Oilers a rule. That's down. barely a trade to announce. This is no, a rule. I'm gonna I re- announce all of them. No, so picks trades do not oh. count. 
No, yeah, they do. No. God so bless the Calgary trades. Flames for trying to salvage yesterday by making two trades, but they were both pick trades. They don't count. You should have just been like, Mark, we're sorry, but people are bored and just traded Mark Giordano. Like just to save the entertainment value. <laughs> we're here to save the NHL. Mark, you've yeah. done a lot of great things for us. Goodbye. <laughs> Mark, we're sorry, dude. <laughs> it is what right. it is. Listen. We're, you know, this is something we don't normally do this early, but we're going to do it this early because I think it is relevant to today. So let us get into Kellogg's Selly. And if not of the week, obviously, because I mean, well, we guess it, I guess we could. But Lafreniere was very, very you know, low key and cool. He knew he was going to New York, barring some ridiculous trade with Buffalo, which apparently was tabled earlier this week. Um, let's talk about some of the best draft celebration, Steve, that you've ever seen. Who Celebrate in your mind? Frosted flakes. Oh, then Tone's here. Tone's who in here. your mind? Who in your mind has had? Who's in, who's enjoyed being picked the most in your mind from what you have seen? And you watch a lot of bet drafts. I do. Um, I want to, well, the, the saddest one, and I always bring it up. Uh, That's what I asked for. Because it, no, because it was so good. Because it was so good. <laughs> kind of and it was good for a number of years. Matt Duchesne, when the Tampa Bay Lightning selected Victor Hedman, he literally went, gosh, because he knew, a little cocky, he knew that meant he was going to go third overall to the team he grew up cheering for. He knew... Uh, Peter Forsberg's exact stick, the flex, Sackick's exact stick, the flex. Then he ended up get, getting traded by his childhood idol. That was a little tough. But at the time, uh, it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I did enjoy Alexi Lafreniere getting mm-hmm. drafted just because um, it really uh, sort of just formally wearing a suit in your living room. Hi, how you doing? Yes. Thank you, mom and dad. We all knew this was going to happen, but we had to set up the cameras anyway. It's nice they sent the Rangers jersey to his house. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but Did they do that thing where they sent all 30 jerseys to all the first-round draft picks? No, they sent all 30 hats. Hats. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, come on. You're going to spring for 30 jerseys, Jesse. Yeah. That's crazy. NHL on a budget. I did, Lafreniere's a little different, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, was, he was far and away, right? There was no doubt. It was obvious. But the, the best one last night, I thought, was uh, Ozzy Weisblatt of the San Jose Sharks. Um, I don't remember who it was making the call for them, but he signed that they were picking Ozzy uh, for his mom. Um, oh, that was so cool. That was so cool. That. Just a genuine, uh, excited reaction. And, like, you didn't even need to – you didn't even need to say his name. Like, basically, the second you start signing, I mean, it's probably for you. Right. So it was, it was just a, a really good story, really good moment. And those are just some of my favorites. And I'm sure we're going to get some more around eight or nine o'clock PM. PM. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so that is your Kellogg's draft selly of the week. <laughs> we had a little bit of history Steve there. Strike. With Matt Duchesne, we had a, a little bit, I guess, I guess, new history made with pick number eight. Yeah. And there's lots coming out. Obviously, we have um, picks happening all the time. I know Columbus just made their third round 78th pick overall. Oh we'll, we'll talk about some of that stuff. But, uh, you know, obviously, <laughs> I know, I know. It is 2.36 p.m. <laughs> I know. And this, so this was supposed to go from 11 to 2, was it not? It was 11.30 till whenever it's done. But that's typically by like 3 at the latest. So what's the holdup this year? It's got to just be the fact that everything takes longer remotely oh yeah that's fair you know what i'll allow for that i mean what can you do right well and like imagine you're trying to get a trade call through yeah like what how do you what do you do what do you you just you're just on hold and like like imagine a deal like what the rangers and the kings did like okay we're gonna give you leas anderson Mm -hmm. for this pick Mm -hmm. this specific pick what happens if that call doesn't go through? And you got to do it over Zoom. You got to do it over Zoom. Like yeah. Gary Bettman did something that I don't think of. Worse, ever you have to go. You have to do it over my Zoom, which freezes. Oh, <laughs> you have sir. to go to Adam's house. <laughs> His <laughs> Wi-Fi. <laughs> He's in the middle of saying Brandon. So- um, <laughs> like, there's a siren going off. Yeah, <laughs> waffles is going what? off in the Second, background. <laughs> I've dropped something. <laughs> I've never seen Gary Bettman go. Uh, 
Like, hey, so what's your pick? Because <laughs> the Leafs had five minutes. That was weird. They ate the whole thing. Supposedly, they were working on some sort of trade. Oh. Um, it sounds like it would have just been picks. Um, oh, did it be traded down? We we don't know. I mean, it's that is Kyle Dubas's jam, and we, yeah. we are going to get into it. Man, that guy loves small forwards and trading down. Now, hold up on that because there's a couple <laughs> things we want to get to before we get to the Leafs because sure. there was a big kerfuffle on uh, Twitter last night. But for, for first, let's start with number one, Alex uh, Lafreniere. Obviously, you've got a guy that is a game-changing center, uh, potential generational talent. They throw that around too much, so I'm, a, I'm hesitant to say that. But That'd if this guy lame. turns into Mark Shifley, the Rangers have won, 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 obviously. Like, they're just, it's amazing. And we talked about earlier the time, like, we talked about this many times. And we're going to talk about this with the Leafs later, but your timeline's matching up. A guy like Lafreniere is jumping in next season. And I, you know, heard some breakdowns yesterday on Sportsnet that said, you know, like, if you pay him for 50 points, which is pretty good to start. And I, I would actually say he's probably capable of more because they're, it's like they're not going to not play him with Artemi Panar. But if you have him playing and he gets 50 points, that's amazing. That lines up perfectly with where the Rangers are going to be timeline-wise. I do still think Jack Eichel in a Rangers jersey makes a lot more sense, it makes w- them more dominant. Cool. We're starting I to piss think, Sabres fans off. Of I don't think, are we? <laughs> They're not liking it. Okay, but the, here's the thing, Sabres fans. If you don't like it, the Sabres went to the Rangers this this week and said, we will do this deal. It's super goofy. And the Rangers now, said, no way. But it did happen. They are talking. I will say this. We got a lot of, ooh, Leaf fans. Ooh, within the division or whatever. Uh, I'm sorry. When was the last time you heard us talking about Jack Eichel? going to the Rangers before Bob McKenzie said it. No one was talking about Jack Eichel going to the Rangers before no. Bob. Yeah, we didn't McKenzie. make that up. Yeah, we were yeah, like, hey, like, guys, you know what would be fun? <laughs> yeah, but like, it, dude, uh, well, then at the end of his thread, he said, oh, but it's probably nothing. Yeah, but they yeah. said that What about Subban, too. It's probably, ah, uh, we're not going to trade him. Ah. He calls on him. Ah, that's probably the thing. Max Domi, the rumors like last week were that, oh, he's not actually going to get traded. And then yep. today he gets traded. Yep. Oh, so, come on. And we got to talk about that because that's yeah. a wild one. That's just a wild trade. A lot crazier than you would think. Um, I, I also want to shout out Quentin Byfield, who becomes the highest drafted person of color in NHL history, uh, going number two to the Kings, which is really cool. Vander Kane sent out a great tweet last night. You know, I didn't even realize that. Something that it didn't even occur to me. Uh, but Quinton Byfield, probably a game changer for uh, the Los Angeles Kings as well. And, you know, like not bad for the NHL when you think about it to have New York and L.A. going one and two in your draft. I mean, it sucks that they're not in the playoffs, right? You want them. Those are teams that you want winning. But boy, oh boy, if, uh, if I'm talking about major markets that I want to line up and get some television eyeballs for, uh, New York and L.A. would be key among them. Okay there, Berkey. And- it's rigged. All he did was win a lottery. All he did was win a lot. You know, it's funny. Like a lot of people I saw roast and Berkey, like, oh, he's bitter about that. And all I could think was Brian Burke would not be on this panel right now. If he drafted Sidney Crosby in 2005. No, he'd be, he'd probably, he'd probably still be the GM of the penguins, to be honest. <laughs> he'd, he'd, be the Ducks. Or the Leafs. He'd, he'd, he'd be uh, knee deep in Stanley cup championships. Yeah, probably. Oh, Adam. He would never have gone to the Leafs if he had true. Sidney Crosby That's true. That's with, the, true. with the Anaheim Ducks. Never, never, never. Had a chance. At least we're oh, well. close on that, apparently, according to lore. <sighs> Almost At least we're close on a lot of things. We were, probably would have screwed it up and surrounded him with the same same cool cast that they did, they did with Kessel anyway. Um, Sidney Crosby flanked by Ladislav Kohn. <laughs> Cody uh, Ceci. Uh, the least make their selection. Uh, but my question about this guy, is he just money in the bank for a trade later on? His name is Rod- Roden Amirov, obviously a uh, smallish player uh, who is highly skilled and who the Leafs, of course, believe could be one of the best players in the draft because why wouldn't they? Of, they drafted of course. Him. One but, of the fastest. Yeah, sure. And all those things can be true. A lot of people very upset that they didn't draft for need. Right now, problem is, um, unless you're Alexis Lafreniere, 
you're probably not going to see the NHL for two or three more seasons, especially given what's going on with the pandemic, uh, unless you're playing in the KHL. So this guy is playing, which is, you know, good. That's yep. important. You know, that's a re- really important thing this year is that North American leagues are not. Th- this was the very funny thing about Amirov is everyone was focusing on the fact that he had two points in the KHL last season. But if you bothered to look for 10 seconds, you'd see this season he already has five. <laughs> in less than half the games, he's played 10 games and he's got five points. Uh, and I did a little bit of digging because, listen, I don't care – how good or bad of a job you think Kyle Dubas is doing. I don't think there's an NHL GM out there that is stupid enough to draft a player whose only available statistics from the previous season was he played 21 games and put up two points. I don't think there's in in the first round 15th overall, not a chance. So I go on EliteProspects.com. I actually ponied up for the premium, which is mint by the way, we are not getting Mm -hmm. paid to say that, but we should caught me my account. Gosh, darn it. Anyway, uh, he played, so there's three leagues in Russia, basically, or there's three, there's a chain of three leagues from the KHL, I should say. So there's the KHL Continental Hockey League. It's the NHL over there. It's the biggest and best league, arguably the second best league in the world at worst, probably third. Then there's the VHL. The VHL is like the American Hockey League, maybe not as developmental. It's basically tier two. Then there's the MHL, which is pretty much junior and basically there Amirov was playing against his peers. Mm -hmm. That's where next to the KHL, he played his most hockey with 17 games, put up 22 points. There were only four players on his team that were over a point a game. Uh, Two of them were 20 when he was just 18. And there's another um, Pashin is his last name. I forget his first name who is available in this draft and who knows, maybe he's gone in the time that I've taken to speak, uh, Corey Pronman actually um, in his mock draft had the Leafs picking him with, I believe, one of their fourth round picks. So uh, he played a lot of hockey. He gets bonus points for even making the KHL at all. It's difficult to make that league. They don't care about your development. They're not there. They're, they're there to win games. They're not there to develop you. They don't right. care. They know you're going to vault for the NHL anyway. Um, so just, okay, you're 18. That's great. Can you help our hockey team win? So we got points just for playing in those games at all. And I think he also got bonus points for how well he did against his peers in the I also, MHL. I also want to throw this out there. And I think, I think this is a, a view represented by a lot of the Leafs nation. So I don't want to stomp on it, but Carlo Koliakovo, a morning show host at TSN 1050 in Toronto said, I don't know anything about uh, Rodian Amirov uh, other than he's a forward, but I don't understand how the Leafs make that pick with Caden uh, Gooley. Is it Gooley? Uh, and Braden Schneider still available and address an area of need. Now, Carlo Koliakovo is a first round pick himself, but Carlo was drafted in 2001, did not see the NHL till 2003. And he was a first round pick, 22nd overall. I remember when they made it. Carlo would know better than anybody that it takes a couple years to develop. The Leafs' needs two years ago versus what they need now is completely different. If you remember a couple years ago, yeah, they needed better defensemen, but they also needed to get rid of that Nikita Zaitsev deal, something fierce. And they were, you know, they were hampered by different things. Um, yes, overall, some of the things remain the same. But then, of course, you know, they say NHL defensemen. Uh, don't really become NHL defensemen until their 150th or 200th game. This is the point I'm trying to make here. With this first-round selection, to me, it seems like the whole idea was we either trade down and grab more assets, which I think they were trying to do, or you, you have this guy, you develop this guy, you keep this guy, but chances are when this guy is ready to play in the NHL, as Kyle Dubas said, the guys that are your core right now are pushing 30. This is probably not a guy that is going to see the NHL with this team, given the needs that they have. It's good to have them in the system. It's good to develop in the system. But prospect capital at this point for the Toronto Maple Leafs, the sole focus should be winning the Stanley Cup. And that means bringing on better players right now, trading future wins to get some current wins. And I feel like he, along with some other players, like, uh, you know, he may not be as valuable right now, but if he comes in, uh, and I don't know if, you know, if the American Hockey League is even have a, a season this year. No. Well, let's say he walks into the American Hockey League and he scores a point a game, which is rare in the American Hockey League. Really rare. 
that's a valuable prospect at that point. That's a guy that you trade at the trade deadline to a developing team. Right? Why, is, why did Carlo act like he doesn't know how drafts work? And Because, okay, the, um, say the Leafs need a, a top four defenseman. Well, you don't get that at 15th in the first round. So no, if you're don't. drafting a defenseman, you're not drafting for need because you're not getting that. You're getting you're, that you're looking three years from now. So I don't understand why he would do that and just kind of pretend like he doesn't know how this entire process works. You're looking at it the wrong way. He wasn't looking at it as a former draft prospect. He was looking at it as a former defenseman. And if only they had a guy like him, they would win. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but they're uh, not getting that today or no. yesterday. No, that's and but that's not a shot at Carlo Coliacomo. I, no, I like him. Just, I like him. No. Yeah. But like, well, it's not okay. a question of liking him, but it, the take can be incorrect. And, oh, and I think it's I misle- disagreed with it. Yeah. I disagree. It, it's with a it. misleading thing to tweet. But like, yeah. for example, like Caden Gooley, who went 16th, you were right, Adam, 6'2. Uh, Braden Schneider, 6'2, went 19th to the Rangers. What was the plan? The Leafs pick one of them and throw them to the Wolves immediately? Think of how jacked you were. For Timothy Lilligren, who's not small, by the way, and look at where he is in his development. He's still not totally there. And there's all kinds of ifs, uh, the the injuries he suffered. Obviously, there was the mono, and that was before his draft. Uh, stuff happened at the World Juniors. Uh, there's, you know, uh, availability of a position. Like Rasmus Sandin had a year burned on his contract, and right now there is not a spot for him on this team especially if they sign a guy or two. So you get the best player available. The Leafs thought Amirov was the best player available. Now, what I said is if they don't go out and get some help on defense, in particular on the right side, in particular get a partner for Morgan Riley. If it's October 12th, 13th, 14th, they still haven't done that, then I get pissed. They weren't going to win the cup last night on October no. 6th no. with the right. 15th overall pick. Uh, that's the wrong, it's the wrong way to look at it. I mean, how much worse is Caden Gooley than Emirov? Like, this is what I was talking about. Maybe you do draft for need a little bit, a little bit. I mean, but they don't have, you- if, if you look at uh, where uh, Amirov's going to be, where he projects to be, let's say he stays with this team in this system. He's the only high-end forward they'll have from that generation so far. So, frankly, you know, because really, because Nylander, Marner, and Matthews could walk at the end of the deal. There's Robertson, too, (laughs) who, by the way, plays the same damn position. Right, but Robertson's going to make this team right now, right? Yeah. I think that the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that if you're drafting for need four years from now, which yeah. is what they're projecting at, uh, or even three years from now. Robertson is a gem, and that's great, but it still took him even a year, and we don't know how long he's going to last in the NHL. We've got him projected in. He sure looked good enough, but remember, he was scratched in the last game for Andreas Janssen. They're thinner now. They've got a space for him. I get it, but the point here is that drafting for need this season for the Toronto Maple Leafs based on where they could draft, and by the way, it was a bloody miracle they even had the 15th overall pick, Mm. is just not going to do anything. You cannot draft for need. What you do is you draft for trade need. And that's why I think uh, Amirov is trade bait. Hopefully he performs really, really well. Um, and I think you you draft the best player because, again, like we said, the, the Leafs did that for a long time. They drafted the best players they could find in each round. And then they kind of got klepto with them and said, we're going to keep them all. And the reality is Janssen and Kapanen should have been shipped out about a year ago. They should have been. They should have been traded. And they should have and they should have brought back a defenseman. And that that's the thing. Keep the best of the best, trade the other guys. They, so they I, had to have done that and they should have done that. I think in retrospect, it's tough. It's easy 2020 looking back. But I mean, if you were to say anything to Kyle Dubas last offseason while he was dealing with the Mitch Martyr contract, you know, when he he got on camera and he sort of had that veiled threat at Janssen and Kapanen saying, Listen, if you don't agree to these deals, we can't keep you. He should have just not kept them, right? Well, this is so when I saw Mirov get picked, I'm like, okay, I can understand why you made that pick for all the reasons that I just mentioned. I understand why you didn't get a defenseman for all the reasons I just mentioned. It's okay that you got this winger. If you freaking keep Janssen and don't address the defense after all this, I'm going to snap. 
Where are all these guys going to go? The whole point of drafting the best player available and not going for need is the value. If you are not going to harvest that value, then what's the freaking point? Right. What is the point? So now look at us. I don't understand why everyone's so upset and hears me talking myself into a fury. Well, I get, I get that part why they're upset, but you can't draft that. You draft to trade that or you trade the pick, right? I think you draft Amirov and you trade Janssen for now. You draft Amirov for later, you trade Janssen for now. 100%. Well, Amirov is not going to get you the not defenseman you need. If, uh, if the 15th overall pick could have got you the defenseman you need, it would have happened. Agreed. Right? Yeah. So 100%. Hey, if the 15th overall pick plus Janssen would have got you the defenseman you need, I think they'd have done it. They'd have it. It wasn't there. It the wasn't there. there. Yeah. He would have made it if he could. Now, it's uh, it's funny. The trade market, some people, it, it there were some really exciting trades, which I guess we'll get to, um, but still less than people thought. And I think a big reason is the amount of names and the quality of the names that aren't even getting qualified because mm-hmm. teams can't afford them is kind of wild. Are you see, like, is that on the list there, Adam? Well, I'm just having a look at it right now. It's it's, I mean, you, you can go ahead if you want, cause I've, I've I'm just lining up the next thing, but please go ahead. Sure. There might go. be Matt Benning coming from Edmonton. Who wasn't he like supposed to be like straight up for Connor Brown at one point, or was that the trade that we messed up? I can't remember. Andreas Athanasiu was, was it worth, was Benning. It was Benning. Yeah. Andreas Athanasiu was worth two seconds just a few months ago. The Oilers aren't going to qualify him. And last I checked, uh, Rick Dollywall was tweeting, there's only a few hours for the Vancouver Canucks to qualify their players. And as of yet, they have not qualified Troy Stetcher even. Mm-hmm. These are not bad players at all. No, no, no. And if you're able to get them, I mean. The, the bargain bin uh, is going to be very important this year, especially because uh, remember we talked about the money drying up? Well, yeah, not if your name is Joel Edmondson, who has been a career depth defenseman, and not if your name is Dylan DeMello. Holy crap. That was a that, lot of money for Dylan DeMello. Man, we were talking about like, oh, he could be a leap for like, I don't know, would you like, would you do like 2 million, 2.5? That guy got nearly 4 million bucks for four years. Yeah. That's a Get, big contract. Secure the bag, Dylan. Mississauga Steelheads represent. Holy. I was, I'm happy for my boy Dylan, but damn, I, I wanted him to be a leaf. Well, I, I did too, but not at, not at 12 million bucks uh, or 12.5 or whatever he got. Whatever and then I was. wish him the best with that. And that's great. And it, it, it saves Winnipeg. Obviously they need right side help that their right side was obliterated last year. He came in and did a great job. It's good news. That's a lot. Jets. And honestly, for the Jets. Dylan DeMello at that price is probably prices him out of the Leafs. Winnipeg had the agency. cap space to spend on that. That is free agency on that. And, and in fact, later on in the show, we're going to talk about some of the bargain bin stuff, things that we've seen. Um, and if you're not a Leafs fan, you're going to have to understand here that every bargain bin buyout we're going to have to discuss because that is what the Leafs have. That's what they have available. It's bargain bin. Guys like Kyle Turris, washed or fourth line center option. These are the things we need to ask. Joe Thornton. You know what I'm saying? That's what we have to talk about. Uh, In the meantime, senators uh, say that this could have been one of the biggest nights in franchise history. I think today was probably uh, one of the bigger days that the franchise has had and one of the bigger positive days they've had in a long, long time. They acquired Matt Murray for basically a guy drafted in the fourth round and a second round pick. Not bad. I tell you what, uh, I know there are a lot of Penguins fans I saw that were happy about this deal. I don't know. That's a great risk for the Ottawa Senators. I really got to say that's a win. It's a it's a huge win. You had all those picks in the first round. You got the guys you wanted um, to trade a second and a guy who you drafted in the fourth round in 2018. So essentially a second and a fourth for a guy, a goaltender who's won two Stanley Cups and like and he's Con- 20. Con Smythe. And a Con Smythe. Or did he? Calder. No. He won the Calder? No, he was in a weird – listen, doesn't matter. He won two yeah. cups, okay. right? So the guy, he's 26. He's basically the age that a lot of goaltenders break into the NHL, and he's already had like a full career where he – the highs, the lows, backup, starter, washed. Uh, I would bet on this guy finding it again 
in a, a new situation and all it cost you was a second and a fourth that you didn't really need yep. because you made some tidy trades to get picks during a rebuild and also a little bit of luck. You weren't counting on the Eric Carlson pick being third overall. You probably thought it was going to be 31st. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Man, really good couple days for the Sentence. Steven, what do you think the deal will look like for the Sentence and Matt Murray? Because he still has to sign a contract with the team. This is the issue. Adam, what was that friggin' thing that you texted me? Because there's no way that's true. Oh, but, eight years or oh, something? You no, know, no. What apparently, apparently some of the more outlandish rumors about Matt Murray uh, were that um, he was looking for something in the neighborhood of $8 million a year, <laughs> which is crazy. Now, that could be an initial ask, right? Often, oftentimes what we see is like, you know, the agent goes in and goes, we're going at eight. They're going to go at four. We'll meet at six. Yep. But what's interesting about this deal to me is the senators acknowledging that they might actually have to spend some money. And, you know, this is a team that's barely staffed off the ice, frankly, you know, and, and, and they, they are like, I mean, mm-hmm. there's no, there's no question about that. This is a team that's run on a shoestring right now um, and that they're going to be very negatively affected by the pandemic and the loss of play and the loss of gate revenue. These are major things for Ottawa who was already struggling when times were good. So I wonder What does the Matt Murray deal look like if there's a deal at all? The question, because here's the risk that they took is they traded him before they had a contract worked out or they traded for him before they had a contract worked out. We saw that with Bernier and the Leafs where Bernier probably got more than he should have, although Leafs management at the time was not all that great. I I have to say, I think Pierre Dorian's done a great job with the cards he's been dealt uh, and the limitations that he's been placed. Like really, truly got a grade on a curve. Absolutely. And I yeah. think I think you look at what Pierre Dorian's been faced with. Uh, boy. I wonder if he's looking around the league, all these teams going, oh, we don't have any money. <laughs> Pierre's like, just like, yeah, it's not my money. world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, will, he lives in that. So this is his this is his arena. But I, I do. You're locked in here with me. I'm curious about this Matt Murray contract. What is this going to look like? Because well, this is, you know, if you're his agent, this is a guy who was an NHL all rookie team. He won two Stanley Cups. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, Penguins fans now are saying, well, he got really lucky. He was on a really good Penguins team. I'm sorry. Stop. Yes, he was. Stop. But let's not pretend Matt Murray was not outstanding in the playoffs. The, the revisionist history on Matt Murray is a little ridiculous. Now, I am not saying he's been great recently. But to say that in the 17 and 18 playoffs when he took over, that he was anything other than really, really good, sometimes spectacular, is crazy. It's a crazy conversation. I can't believe we're having it. I can't well, believe like, we're talking about this. Like it's, like, it's a real thing. We People were ranting and raving about this kid, Matt Murray, who came out of nowhere. And now everybody's like, well, when Marc-Andre Fleury left, he was just terrible. Well, and he joined the NHL at such a young age, was thrust into such a ridiculous scenario, um, you know, really high highs. And di- didn't he lose his father in, in the know. middle of all that as well? I believe he did. Like... I, I would I would bet on this player. I would 100% bet on this player. It's a great deal for the Sens. Now, for the contract, though, <laughs> part of the reason Dubas was grilled so badly for the RFA deals is with RFAs, you're supposed to have... The, the you're hand. supposed to have the leverage, man. <laughs> you're supposed to have the upper hand. The Sens do. Because what happens, okay? He's still an RFA with the Ottawa Senators. And they have their negotiations and they go, here's all we can pay you. And Matt Murray goes, well, I don't want that. And it goes through until whenever the season begins, let's say January 1st, they can't hammer out a deal by January 1st. And Matt Murray goes, well, then I'm going to sit and then you're going to lose some games. And the Sens go cool. (laughs) Okay. We're going to anyway. we're rebuilding. We don't care. We'll go, we'll go out and lose some games. We'll try really hard, but we'll end up losing. And what, like, what, what, what do you think you're going to get more money by sitting out? We're, we're just going to go out and get some better teammates for you to make you look good. It, Let me ask we're you rebuilding. This. We're chilling. Is there, is there a potential that the Sens acquired Matt Murray knew that there was a chance they couldn't sign him, but they were going to try. And then if they can't, the cost of acquisition was so low that it could easily be recouped in a trade with another team once another team gets desperate. Yeah, I have a hard time. You only do that if you think you get back more than you paid. And I just, I don't know, all your leverage is gone if you're sort of like, ah, we give up. All right, now we're going to. 
And who's going to give you more than I think somebody will get desperate, guys. I, I, I hear that, and I, and I think that's too creative for an NHL GM. How often do we see something like that go down? It's just, <laughs> Doug Wilson. I, I, Doug I look, Wilson did it once. Okay, but I look at it the same <laughs> the way I look, at, I look at the draft. I look at the offer sheets. It's like, okay, we expect all these things. We expect them to get creative like that with these RFAs. And I'm like, oh, I know they're going to get them. They're going to sign them. By the way, that, that's a simple for- thing. And that's a simple thing that happens. Jesse, you're 100 percent right. That's, that's the so offer funny. sheets, by the way, as of this recording, two hours left, five o'clock tonight. Uh, so by the end of the show, we'll know who got qualifying offers and who didn't. Uh, I don't Lisa know why Mark Bergevin doesn't try it. Uh, try what? Qualifying? Not gonna happen. No, an, an offer sheet. Oh, oh, sorry. You mean sorry? He's qualifying? QOs. QOs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my bad. My bad. No, because uh, I mean, he tried it last year, and he just got more picks. Go out and try it. Just. You got to spend more. You can't go out and give eight point five to Sebastian Ajo, and have the Hurricanes be like, "Yeah, dope." Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, my point, Adam, was that your suggestion is probably smarter than what the GMs are thinking. God, that's so good. <laughs> oh, that's great. Don't give me that much credit, man. <laughs> I'll fuck it up somewhere down the line. Um, now there uh, there are still two picks left in the third round, by the way. Oh yeah, no, no, this it is, is going three oh three. Now, am I crazy, guys, or was yes. the acquisition cost of Josh Anderson extremely high? Yeah. Uh, no. What? I'm not crazy. Wait. Oh, wait. Yes. So, so yeah. okay. No. This confused <laughs> me. It's funny. I was talking to Shannon from uh, uh, the hockey guy on Twitter about this. Who got the pick? Columbus got the pick from Montreal. So, Domi and a pick. Now, Domi at one point had 70 plus points wow. and is a center. And Josh Anderson is injured. Yeah, Very. Domi is a sometime <laughs> center. Even as a wing, he's got value. Like, and if this they had a whole mini off season, and it still wasn't enough time for Anderson to get recovered to play in the playoffs. Like Anderson, dude, Anderson is like a dying breed in this league. Um, he's huge. Um, he had twenty seven goals in the twenty eighteen nineteen season. He played twenty six games this year. Had one goal, three assists, and four points. And you're going to give up Max Domi and a pick? I I don't know. And he's 26, like which isn't old, obviously. But I don't know how much better you necessarily expect him to be. Uh, I'm thinking the Habs were done with Max Domi, the person, because that's. The only thing that makes sense to me because he's still a pretty good hockey player. And I don't, you guys, you guys are assembling a team right now mm-hmm. and you, you got to win one game. Are you picking Josh Anderson or Max Domi right now? Well, right now I, I know Max Domi can play. <laughs> one of those guys can play hockey. He can actually play. Like he's not. Hurt. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. Like Josh Anderson might end up, being the better guy. He is a power forward that Montreal needs. I mean, Montreal is small up front, right? I mean, Brendan Gallagher is grit and heart and all those things, but it can't just be Brendan Gallagher, right? It's got to be. No. There are other players. And frankly, the younger centers they have, the Denos, the Suzukis, they they probably need some bigger, tougher wingers. However, you still, like, you not only do you have to get Josh Anderson, you have to sign Josh Anderson, who is a Darren Ferris yeah. client, who had a miserable time. So is Domi. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> No, I, I don't I, – I, I'm just curious, like, and, and what's a Josh Anderson deal going to look like? No I idea. I mean, not that – Montreal doesn't have cap issues, so it's not really a huge problem. How do you but buy you high not- on a guy – how do you buy high on a guy a year late? You know what I mean? That's a good, that's a good way to describe it. They're buying I mean, listen, high a year late. So let's say – let's say for fun, last year this deal happens. Domi for Anderson – and oh, sorry, Domi and a third for Anderson. This is when Domi's coming off a 77 point year or 72 point year, whatever it was. 72. And Anderson's coming off of a 47 point year. We're still much- asking. No, we're still asking the same question. We're still saying you're trading a guy with 70 points for a guy with 47 points and a third. I was about to say it's much. It's a much bigger blockbuster because it's this goal scoring forward for a playmaker. And then I looked, oh, Domi had more goals. <laughs> He had 28 goals. I, man, I don't know. they must be sick of the, there's got to be a personality thing there. Supposedly Domi wouldn't talk about his relationship with Claude Julian. Yeah. He said he didn't want to get into it. 
Oh, uh, which I mean, maybe he just doesn't want to get into it. Um, well, because maybe it's nobody's business. It's in the past. Now it doesn't matter anymore, yeah. right? Yeah, but how hard is it to just be like, yeah, I don't know. He's waiting get, get along. Yeah. yeah, and under talk's point about this deal too is that Josh Anderson still needs a contract. He's an RFA. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. Like, what does that deal look like? By the way, uh, Las Vegas has re-signed Chandler Stevenson to a four-year extension worth $11 million. And uh, Columbus and Max Domi. Uh, I see we both have Elliot Friedman's Twitter open, Adam. Too. Uh, mm-hmm. oh Max Domi and uh, Columbus are making progre- progress on a contract extension. And if Elliot doesn't make it CBJ instead of CLB, I'm going to snap. That's the Where it is, Kolb? Let it's him, not let him, Kolb. Let him do it. No. It's funny. It's okay. He needs <laughs> to make it BUS. On a list of things I don't care about. No, this is okay. If you have OCD or whatever it is that's going on in there, it matters. Sorry, if, if you have Octa. Oh my God, that took me a sec. I'm, I'm so upset with myself. Uh, okay, next one. Wayne Simmons given permission to speak to teams ahead of free agency on Friday, which means he will not be in Buffalo. Steve, you made a really good point on Twitter, which is everybody forgot he was in Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, man, like that's just Kevin Adams doing right by an NHL veteran. I mean, what what are you hoarding? What and like, if if I'm Wayne Simmons or Wayne Simmons camp, I go, uh, what are you? What are you gonna trade my rights? Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> friggin' come on, let me yeah. talk. Yeah. So obviously he's going and talking, and this is you know knowing full well that he could potentially go to a a team within the division, but uh, yeah, let him talk. Who cares? Who care? I I wish more teams did. To be honest, yeah. I know I know you don't want to help out the other teams in the league, but but at the same time, if it, it doesn't affect you all that much, like what, they're going to sign somewhere point? else anyway. So what does it matter? Also, and and I feel like he was a genuinely special situation yeah. where it was Buffalo, and this was pre Kevin Adams as well. So maybe that's part of it. Like, l- listen, I'm not even the guy who brought you here. I you were brought here because the other GM was trying to save his job, and it was basically a gesture to Buffalo Sabres fans. Like, look, we're at least trying. And then he got to play, what was it? Seven games <laughs> and the season got bust. So yeah, he was uh, Wayne said, I'm surprised in the stories that I've seen, they were able to find a picture of him wearing a Sabres jersey. So, uh, and, and LeBron wrote, if it makes sense for the leaf, it's under $2 million. Something like that. Does I would like that very much. Yeah. I would yeah. like, and, and, and I think we have to be reasonable in our expectations about what Wayne, Wayne Simmons can do now because it's got to be a much more limited role. But you have Wayne Simmons to pack a punch in a small amount of time. He's not going to play 20 minutes. He's no. probably not going to fight as much, but he is going to bang and crash, and he'll probably play 60 games for you, right? And he's also had an eternity to recover <laughs> now. Yeah. His, he hasn't played a hockey game since early March. March. It's since currently – it's he it's cold outside again you know what i mean that, that's the yeah. last time he played it's cold outside again so uh, who knows who who knows and i also posted on twitter adam i posted two different players a 35 year old and a 32 year old both guys who you know injuries you know uh, downward turn in their career but one guy was younger and had more points during the regular season mm-hmm. it was wayne simmons the other guy was Corey Perry. Wayne Simmons outscored Corey Perry and is three years younger. And you go, well, Corey Perry in the playoffs. Well, Wayne Simmons went to the was freaking in- Sabres, so he never got the chance. That's right. And I think you also have to take in consideration that New Jersey was awful and so was Buffalo. So that, that <laughs> I mean, what was it? Jake Believes had a really great tweet about this. And, and he said, hey, stats people. Now he's calling every, everyone out. But he did say, hey, all of you. I can't believe I still have to say this, but you guys thought uh, GM George McPhee draft in Vegas was a bunch of washed up losers and they ended up playing well together and being really good. Maybe take it easy on Wayne Simmons's production in New Jersey and Buffalo. Now, is Wayne Simmons the guy he was five years ago? No, but I think Jake made a good point there. This is a guy that even if he plays, like it depends on the cost, obviously. But if you can get him for a couple years at 2 million bucks a season, you do that. Well, and it's right. something Dubas is willing to do because did you see Myrtle's little mini bomb that no one seems to really be talking about? Please talk about that a little bit. 
supposedly Kyle Dubas offered his boy, man. He loves his guys. Supposedly he offered Kyle Clifford three years at over a million bucks, which is wild because it's well over a million bucks term. And I believe it means the Leafs had to give up a second instead of a third to the Kings. Mm -hmm. What? So why won't he go out? What's Kyle Clifford thinking? What's I, why did he say no? I know, I know. The next what? few years, the cap is flat. What's he think he's gonna make? There's probably a market for Kyle Clifford. I, I would have said, like, if if he's turning that down, then his agent knows something, and that some other team is chomping at the bit to get Kyle Clifford on their team. He's probably gonna make upwards of what two point five. Yeah, and supposedly the deal's not dead, but like, man, if you're if you're turning that down, you don't want to be a Leaf that bad. Come on. Come on, I'm not asking him to even throw the Leafs a bone. Like you're you're on the fourth line. I also find you're it on concerning. The fourth line. I also find it concerning that they offered him that. Well, so this is the thing. Everyone, oh, Dubas didn't go out and blah 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 blah. But he's been chomping at the bit to go out and address size and toughness so much so that he was willing to do this. And now these details are out there. Everyone's. I am I'm a little scared what he's going to do. I think there's going to be a little bit of an overcorrection. Listen, I think there's going to be a little bit of be careful what you wish for here because the Leafs do need to address this. I think it's more important on the back end, to be honest. But it's not going to come cheap. I keep seeing people, oh, I wouldn't give Radko Gudis. Well, then who would you? Mm-hmm. Who would you? Radko Gudis is one of the... Uh, biggest psychopaths in the nhl <laughs> when and it comes to and he's not beating. bad and he's not yeah. a bad player even by analytics standards you no. may have to overpay for this the other thing i want to say steve i want to add to that uh pat maroon was on good show with jd bunkus and uh, ben ennis on sportsnet yeah. 590 good they clip said, really good clip and they they talked about him being you know sort of he's been an undervalued free agent for a couple of years now when he signed in st louis after edmonton and when he signed in tampa bay after st louis Mm -hmm. and he said you know like they asked him straight up would toronto be on the radar and he he certainly seemed to be warm to that he said i think you're on to something now pat maroon's a perfect fit for what the leafs need big rig fit what's it cost and you know what you have to be somewhat okay with the fact it's probably going to cost more than you think it should Probably going to cost more than the models say it should, right? Big That's how free agency works, though. Free, free agency is you pay what yes. you get for, and you have to overpay for everyone in free agency because everyone's yes. bidding, and the prices go higher when there's multiple teams on one guy. Odds are you're not going to see a deal on October 9th or typically July 1st where you go, wow, what a bargain. <laughs> right? That's not how it works. That was the most sought-after guy. You got to wait a week or two or at least a few days Oh, okay. Yeah. What a bargain. Big rig. I'm just looking at his numbers right now. So with the lightning in 64 games, nine goals, 14 assists, 23 points shortened, uh, just doing math in my head. That's around a 30 point pace, about a dozen goals the year before with the blues, 74 games, 10 goals, uh, 28 points. So once again, around a 30 point pace for a huge guy with the playoff experience that he has, I'm depth guys who are pretty much money in the bank to get at least 30 points. That's a guy you pay at least two mil. Yeah. Probably two and a half. I was just going to say back to back cups. He might get three Mm -hmm. with term. He might get three times three Mm -hmm. leaf fans. Would you be willing to do that? Would you be willing to replace Andreas Janssen with Patrick Maroon straight up? Basically. Yes. Yes. You already have what Pat, what Andreas Janssen brings. You got that in the big four. What you need is a guy that doesn't that brings something else. It's not working. This mix isn't working. Exactly, which is something why needs to, to be tweaked. <laughs> now I now again, that's a be careful two what you half, wish for. Two and a half is what I said. Two and a half is what I'd go. For. Cool, because I'm for, hey, for Maroon. The Leafs get Patrick Maroon, and I go yes, and then they go three times three, and I go. Ooh, but does boy. that hurt you that much? I don't think it hurts you that much. Five hundred. No, grand. like honestly. Honestly, for a guy that can play for you for three years and you get, the, come on, like 500 grand. It's not if it, crazy. If it doesn't work, then you need to make much larger moves, right? Yeah. And well, so and, we're, t- we're talking a couple of years from now. And why wouldn't you do a hardcore bonus on a guy like that so you can move him? If it doesn't work, you've paid him all the money up front anyway. And then you, and then you go, okay, Arizona next year, 
Here's a guy that'll get you to the floor. Okay, right. Ottawa, here's a guy that'll get you to the floor. Like the Leafs can do this. So any free agent that you sign, first off, if you give them those bonuses up front, the average per season comes down for you because they're probably wanting to get most of that money in a lump sum right. because then they can give it to an investor, investor puts it out there, that sort of thing. And we already know personally what that money will do for you if you get most of it up front. So you've already got that going for you as a richer club in this in the NHL. The other thing is when you look at, you say, say it's a three-year deal, you look at years two and three, if you only owe the guy league minimum, you can train him anywhere. I'm also wondering if they're going to look at potentially changing the way free agency is because all the top free agents, I, I, I did a free agency video. that's not up yet for sports and it's YouTube channel. All the top free agents, like the youngest one is I think 28 mm -hmm. and it's Taylor hall and he's going to be 29 in a month. Like these are all, this is when you're supposed to have your seven, eight year deal. And all these players, they're not going to get the full term. Like the, the eight year max who gets that. Who even gets the seven? I don't How many know. guys are getting six? They were handing out 10-year contracts like they were M&Ms, like they were USB keys at a friggin' business trip or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> the seven and the eight-year deals seem to be reserved for the RF, the after your entry-level deal. So you're 19, then you're 20, and then and you're elite. So the 22-year-old yes. who's elite in the top 10 of the league, they get the eight-year deal that takes them to their late 20s slash early 30s you know it's uh, it's a tough go by the way the usb keys thing i was helping my dad clean out an old computer desk because he was throwing it away he goes son do you have any use for these he gave me a box i don't know where he got it from he gave me or no i do he used to work at the eaton center and he retired from there mm -hmm. he gave me a box of i think it was about 20 usb keys there were 64 megabytes <laughs> nice i go dad <laughs> It's either for the garbage or a museum. <laughs> Throw it away. Get rid of it. Yeah, I think you threw it out. Uh, next here is the Oilers and Ken Holland will not extend qualifying authors to a fantasy you or Benning. Now, we mentioned Benning earlier, but what a what would look like a pretty good trade deadline for the Oilers is now sort of shaping up to be a bit of a disaster. You've got Mike Green, who played for three games, got injured, and then retired. Uh, yeah, well, and, and, and chose not to go to the bubble at all. Right. And then yeah. you've got uh, a J.S. Athanasiu who, you know, the Oilers didn't get through the play-ins like the Leafs. Mm -hmm. And he'll now go to UFA after they spent two second round picks on him. It's crazy. That's a lot. Yeah. And they could. It's Jeez. because his qualifying offer would have been about three million dollars, I think. And they can't afford it. And Ryan Rashog was saying, under normal circumstances, even an underperforming Athanasiu, they'd be like, eh, but oh, well, whatever. And they would qualify him. Now they're left with nothing, nothing, unless unless they somehow manage to re-sign Tyler Ennis. What will they have from the 2020 trade deadline? I'm pretty sure the answer is nothing. Yeah, that's oh, that's just tough. such a tough pill to swallow. And, and that and that is the risk that you take. Um, however, two seconds for a fantasy at the deadline seemed like a lot. It's a slam dunk for T Steve Eiserman. Like a real talk about selling your assets back to a guy that used to be the GM of your team. You know what I mean? It's, it's oh. a, but it's, it is sort of surprising that the Oilers are there. And I wonder if they're not banking on the fact that there's going to be a ton of pretty good talent available that did not receive qualifying offers. You almost wonder yeah, if a guy them. like Andre, yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, uh, we, we, uh, I think we saw earlier today, Tyler Toffoli, not going to resign in, uh, and I know that he was going to be qualifying offer anyway, but, you know, Tyler Toffoli is not going to stay in Vancouver after they spent significant assets to get him. You know, uh, it's a, it's, it's going to be a weird year. So I wonder if it looks bad for the Oilers now from this position, but on October 10th, are we saying the same thing? Because who doesn't want to go play with Connor McDavid, even for a year? This, this is the, oh, well, yeah. Like his wing is like. open. Leon Drysaddle's wing is open. That's a cool job. Right? It's unbelievable they've had so much trouble filling that vacancy. Yeah. It's uh hopefully I don't know, Pully RV gets back. A full season of Kaylor Yamamoto's gonna be something for them too. What's Chris Kunitz up to these days? Yo, perfect guy to play <laughs> with stars, right? I mean, hey, Alberta, it's the hockey Canada connection. Ken Holland. Hey Chris, how retired are you? You're not that retired. You wanna play with <laughs> Connor McDavid? Come on. You want another Hall of Fame center to play with? We got you. 
that guy doesn't Chris Kunitz have like five cups? Yeah, and and a gold Someone, medal. That's so goofy. That's yeah. so absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, they only selected him for Team Canada so he could play with Crosby, which at the time was insane and is still insane. But good for Chris Kunitz, man. Like whatever, that's great. But that's okay. the thing. They're looking for their Chris Kunitz. They're looking for their guy that's gonna be. I am not. I am Robin. I am not Batman. I am Robin. <laughs> I might not even be Robin. I might be Alfred, but I'm going to be there. And the, the, I, I think there's a, I, I, I mean, if you're looking at it like, okay, if there is a flat cap for the next couple of years and you're, or three years, they're saying, and you're signing and you know, you're going to be a short-term deal anyway, playing there is not the worst thing in the world. Like that's you're thinking about thing. from the player's perspective. Well, a hundred percent because you're going to Edmonton, which is a red hot hockey market anyway. So you're going to have Edmonton, no matter what always has a spotlight on it before Connor McDavid, Edmonton made headlines every single day. And now that they've got McDavid and dry playing the way that they're playing um, Edmonton is always top of the headlines list. It always is like if, Toronto gets a, a lot, the lion's share of Canadian coverage, and it does. And I understand the frustrations with that. Edmonton is a pretty close second. There's a lot of media there, and there's a lot of national media coverage because of the stars that they have. And before that, it was because of the fumbling. It was because of the we don't know what to do for years. And it's there is Edmonton an is a Canadian consistently <laughs> they're a consistently interesting story. And I think. Yeah. If I'm a player, I look at that from a PR perspective. Remember the Leafs were really bad and they signed a bunch of guys who were like, maybe I can get, extend my career and make some money. Um, like Mason Raymond is a perfect example. Signed with the Leafs, scored 20 goals, signed a three-year deal with Calgary right afterwards for nine Patrick million bucks. Patrick Maroon would be a good guy. Well, wonder, would Patrick Maroon go back to Edmonton? Was a great Probably fit not. the first time. Uh uh, I mean, different, well, different what, what's now. he gonna do? Play for a payday? Like the guy's 32. It's yeah. uh, I think that ship sailed. It's unbelievable. He wasn't able to get a significant payday out of that. What you would think Canadian teams would have a bit of an advantage this year just because of the less COVID having, I would think, but I'm amazed by how much chatter I'm hearing about the Florida Panthers and oh yeah, they're going to be able to attract this guy and this guy. And I'm like, man, sunshine and no state tax still trumps, uh, deadly virus. Apparently, I don't think like, I don't think players are concerned about the virus in terms of where they're going to play because no shit. Well, they get free <laughs> medical coverage and they're in the best right. shape of their life. Season starts January first, and if anything, like the the summer has proven is that the sports have the best protocols out of anywhere outside of like airports. It's airports yeah. and sports. They have the yeah. best protocols for containing the virus. So I don't think anywhere you play, it's the same risk. Kind of. Yeah. There's. There's got to be some sort of plan, but that's another conversation that I'm sure we'll yeah. have over the next two months. Um, another team that'll have to do something similar, as I mentioned, Tyler Toffoli uh, will go to um, go to free agency, and Tim Schaller will as well. Uh, it does really? save it saves the Vancouver Canucks a fourth round pick that would have gone to LA. Um, uh, so yeah, so like if you look back to the original deal, Canucks acquired Toffoli from LA. Oh, sorry. Excuse me, Tim Schaller. What am I saying? They traded Tim Schaller and a second round pick for him um, and for oh. prospect Tyler Madden. So the Kings for will second. also acquire an additional fourth round pick in 2022 if Toffoli resigns in Vancouver, which he will not do. And again, you know, we talked about this for a couple of years and Canucks fans gave us a hard time, which is fine. But if you don't have the Sutter and the Beagle deals, Toffoli is a Canuck next year. A hundred percent. And who, you do you, who would you rather have? As I said, Jim Benning has done an incredible job with that draft. There's no question that that scouting staff ought to be lauded. They've done awesome. But this is a team that's now potentially looking at their Brock Besser's name is in trade rumors. It's pretty well, especially after the season they had. And it's looking likely they're going to lose Jacob Markstrom. Elliot Friedman, I um, can't remember if it was last night or this morning. You know, you know uh, where he was talking about as a potential landing spot for Jacob Markstrom? No. Edmonton. Oh, that would be scary. That's a disaster for the Canucks in particular. Yeah. Forget the fact that it would make the Oilers much better. You give your starting goaltender to the divisional rival down the street? If you get – if, if well, the Oilers get Markstrom and he plays like Markstrom did, the Oilers are – what are they, a lock for the second round? Dude, I'm, a favorite? a Markstrom Koskinen. Don't say that. Uh, tandem? That's scary. 
it's a pretty expensive tandem, but it'd be good. Yeah. But like we're gonna say that and then the Oilers go out don't even make the playoffs or the go in the first you know round, what? you know? We always have these high expectations for Edmonton in the last like two years. One of these they days that up. good ship oiler is gonna come in for us, okay? As much as Oiler fans, yeah. as much One as we day. chirp the Oilers, all of us always pick them pretty highly. Like <laughs> there's a healthy, every every a healthy single respect. year. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah. But if we if we keep doing it, eventually we'll be right. But we've been wrong. Right. For well, the last so is their entire so. media group. So I I don't even feel, feel bad about it. <laughs> Remember Chicago <laughs> beat them in the first game of the playoffs, and then McDavid had his revenge game the very next game. Yeah, scores two goals in five minutes. Just absolute monstrous takeover. I was watching them again because I was doing some best of the bubble stuff, and I'm just like, how do the Oilers for, forget? making the playoffs and contending for a cup. How did they ever lose a game? He's that <laughs> good. I don't know how they're not 82 and 0 and then 16 and 0. Well, they every stop single puck. year. They couldn't what? stop a puck against the um the crazy Chicago offense. I like come on. Come I mean, on. It's pretty good. But Dominic Kubalik was amazing. Patrick Kane's always good, but like like, come okay. On. But come on, Steve, right? Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it, man. He's so good. He's so good. And apparently he's not even their best player. Yeah. Well, and... and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you like that? Certainly, Steve, there's no question. Connor McDavid no. is not the Oilers' most important player. That's for sure. Proven Whoa. by this year's MVP. Yeah. Value-wise, yeah. he's not the most important player. If you don't agree with me, just check on uh, who won the MVP this year because that makes so much sense. Boys, before we continue, we've hit a milestone. It is 3.30, meaning we are exactly four hours into day two of the draft. We have just hit pick 100. Ooh. <laughs> there are still here. I need to, I need to, how many picks are there? There are 30. 217. <laughs> you know, I got to, I got to respect the NHL network guys. Cause they're like, Whenever, whenever they got a guy like the, the next draft pick, it's like, well, he's a this and he's a that. He sure is a lot of this. And I'm like, how do you know a thousand players? Sam That's Constantino. There needs to be a there needs to be a, a bingo game where you drink every time they say special player. Oh, yeah. Every guy is a special player. I, I, my know? favorite breakdown, actually, they they I forget who it was, but they're like, this guy doesn't do anything special, but he does it all pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god like that is a definition of a third rounder i think it was a goalie taken by it was the first goalie taken in the third round whoever that ended up being but they were like he doesn't do it i think it's detroit like oh they're comparing him to jimmy howard doesn't do anything spectacular but it's all pretty uh pretty good so i, I it was just huh. I, what do you say after player 100 that you haven't said right. about the first hundred players, you know what I mean? It's a lot of work. I have full respect for this. That this round one's one thing, and there should be pomp and circumstance and fireworks and whatever. Two through seven is just a grind. It's just crazy. Sam Constantino's on there oh. giving five minutes worth of life stories about <laughs> third round picks. And I'm like, I don't know this much about my best friends. I don't know if how you, he does it. I it's, love it's you guys. Crazy. I couldn't get on TV and talk about you for six hours. I don't know enough. I don't. <laughs> I don't. Sam's, Sam's one of those like otherworldly talents that doesn't get the credit he deserves. I think like yeah. to know, like think about how many there's whatever teams there are in the NHL. There's like triple that in June. Yeah. He has more to say about people he's never met than if you put me on TV and just pulled up my Facebook friends at random. Yeah. I want to see his notes. <laughs> yeah. I want to see oh. his Bible for oh what God. every every year because every year he has to do a new one, right? Right. So oh, yeah. every year he's scouting the next draft class, and I want to see what that that PDF document looks like of just guys he has to talk about. Do you it's guys incredible. want to hear something funny? What they've officially stopped airing the NHL draft no. and have moved on to a baseball game. Playoffs. You're <laughs> kidding. I'm not. It's okay. Who's on? Go to NHL Network because uh, what's the uh, I don't know what channel that is on Bell Five. Bell Five, See, a high quality pro product. If Bell you had Five. Rogers Ignite, you could just say NHL Network into your uh, friggin' uh, remote converter, if you will. What's the what's the score in the Houston game? Uh, it's just starting. Oh, okay. It's trash can to trash can. So we were talking. We <laughs> were really talking about Houston how destroyed. No, I hope they win so they play the Yankees in the next round. I want to. Oh, that would be fun. Fair, 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 fair. I, as much Team as I want them to lose, chaos. I want to see uh, New York Houston. 
weirdly, I don't know that I have the NHL network even available on my channel guide. Which huh, is, weird. I've got NHL Center Ice, no. which I also don't pay for. Sounds like you've also got an inferior product. I don't think so. I don't, I'm not upset What's with the, the product uh, that I have. What's the next thing we're supposed to talk about? Oh, well, so I wanted it? to, I wanted to <laughs> don't, mention. Don't how, care what you want. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> Go I ahead, wanted Steve, to mention boy. how Sam Constantino knows absolutely everyone. Yeah. And then 21st overall, Columbus Blue Jackets select Yegor Chinnikov. And he doesn't know who he is. Yeah. It was a very <laughs> funny moment. That was hilarious. And then I saw on a certain draft predictor, he was predicted to go somewhere between 90 and like 205th or something like that. Then there was a report. Oh, one team had him ranked 28th. Whoa. So, I guess it was Columbus. It, well, and then no, Adam, because Columbus goes, we had him in our top 10. They must have unbelievable scouting in Omsk. It's Omsk. Avangard? Is that who he plays for? Yegor Shinnikov. It's going to be, that's going to be such a good clip if he ever turns into a star. I don't know who this guy is. And it's amazing because there's so many more resources now and with the internet and everything. The, the closest I've heard to a story like this is when the Leafs drafted Nick Antropov and mm, they were yeah. covering the draft on the Fan 590. That's what it was called back then. And Antropov was ranked like 42nd. And he went 10th, which is a huge jump, but it's not 90th to 21st. Yeah. And, you know, drafted out of Kazakhstan. And like they were just, Leafs had the 10th overall pick. And whoever was on air was just frantically like, ah, and like basically all they knew was his height. That's all they had. So just Leafs get a big guy and he's very big and he's big. (laughs) That was all they had to go on for the 10th overall pick. Rick Dallywell uh, out of Vancouver is reporting just 48 seconds ago. Lots of Markstrom rumors, but can confirm the Canucks and Markstrom are still working on things, still trying to get a deal done in Vancouver. They have not stopped trying. <laughs> so that's good. Um, yeah. the Canucks- Mike, Mike Stevens, is is the rest of the draft televised? <laughs> well, and then Andrew Berkshire just said, the steal of the draft was my time. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's that's tough. That's tough. Listen, dingers, baby. Dingers, Berkshire. That was a good that's one. That's at least a first round pick. I Andrew think Berkshire's so. time, that's like fifth overall. That's for sure. Oh, yeah. That man knows math. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh let's move on to the Tampa Bay Lightning. We've got a couple interesting things going on. Obviously, we've got okay. uh Steven Stamkos popping up in rumors because he's the highest paid besides Kucherov, uh, and also the guy that's the oldest and the most injured. And at a certain point, you kind of think, well, like, you know, we, we may have to look at that. But the other thing is that I feel like, and there's a, there's a few people that have tweeted this, so I'm totally lifting this from Twitter, but it's a really good point. A couple of years ago, when the Blackhawks were good and Stan Bowman was on his game, uh, everybody seemed to help the Blackhawks, the Leafs chief among them. Oh, we'll take Chris Versteeg off your hands. Oh, we'll take Dave Bullen off your hands and overpay for both of them because they won a cup. Tyler Johnson, who is a very good player, is probably a guy that is going to fetch a pretty good price. Um, and it looks as though uh, Julian Brisewell and Johnson, uh, Johnson's agent, J.P. Barry, are going to work together to find him a new home, even though he's got sort of a, a no-trade clause. But the interesting thing with this is that some team is going to step in and help the Tampa Bay Lightning get better with futures that they traded for Tyler Johnson. Remember the Muskoka Five? I do. So the Muskoka Five, you know, it, Steve, you're going to have to explain that because remember, mm-hmm. that was 16 years ago, right? I know. The Muskoka <laughs> okay. Five, the Leafs had five players with no trades. And I believe it was Sundin, Caberlet, McCabe, Tucker, and, and there was another one. I don't remember who. And the Leafs were criticized for that because five on the same team, that's insane. The reigning Stanley Cup champions have nine it's gotten out of hand, and I think a lot of teams are going to discover that where Tampa's like, what, third line center has a, has a no move? That's wild. Yeah, when he signed it, he was probably projected to be higher. I think some injuries have stepped in there, and obviously sure. there's cap issues, but yeah, it's a lot. It was one thing that Steve Eisenman did 
to the for these players to accept lower terms. And you can expect that in Detroit too, by the way, as they continue to build and get better. I would expect a lot of no trade and no movement clauses as they get stars in there in the next five years. Um, I do find it interesting though that somebody's going to go and and overpay for Tyler Johnson because that's just the way it's going to be. And this and the Lightning oh, will come perpetually on, get better until they inevitably goof up and trade their version of Panarin for Brandon Saad. It's never going to happen. You don't think so? No. Although we said that about Chicago, so maybe you're right. Maybe mm. in a few years they, you know what? We got to get Luke Shen back. <laughs> One of the rumors I saw was that Stamkos uh, front runner for Stamkos was Vegas. If they can move Flurry's contract, oh my then God. that moves moves seven million dollars out, and then he's got to make the one point five million room for Stamkos. And they I have so many was. guys that they can probably finesse the deal. I uh, I think it was Travis Yost. He's like, does Vegas have a cap? They don't. They don't have a cap. <laughs> they're so much worse than the Leafs in terms of uh, they're just in on everybody. Mm-hmm. Everybody like no. Who is the best, most expensive name available? They're only in on them. There, there's no Vegas rumors with any bargain guys. Well, they're collecting stars, and look at how it's worked out for them. It's yeah, but they're like I would love to do better. that too. But the cap's not two hundred mil. Where are they getting this money? I don't get it. Gambling, obviously. They, they, oh, there casinos. it is. Where is Vegas uh, getting the money? What a stupid question. <laughs> I should have known. Casinos, uh, which by the way are open. Yeah. in vegas oh but cool open here they're actually open here too so they're open yeah that's right don't you dare see anyone for thanksgiving though don't you dare <laughs> no don't you freaking if you leave your front door on thanksgiving and go anywhere but a casino we're gonna be pissed how that's what's going on in ontario right now yeah. Yeah. Just adds up. you can go out wherever you want but yeah. don't have anyone over and the premier Dad, is absolutely getting together with 20 people Gu- guaranteed <laughs> i can't wait to see the story i cannot wait to see the story guaranteed hey guys 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 Guys, don't see your mom and dad. Fuck your parents, right? Yeah. Wow. wow. Go, to, go to the casino, though. Spend Thanksgiving some... is a super spreader event. I have. Um, I'm that just down this road. From the, that is a quote. I've got <laughs> yeah. a, uh, I've got a, uh, the, the Woodbine off track racing near me because where I, where I live, there used to be a horse race track here. So they have off track betting still here because that's what used to happen here 20 years ago. Uh, they've now moved it up to Rexdale, which is where the Queens, Queens plate happens and everything. But uh, um, there is a lineup to get into that every morning. Oh, wow. To get in and do off-track betting every morning. There's a lineup to get in. We should go. I don't even know what you do. I don't, I don't bet. Like, I don't know. Bet I don't even know pony. odds. I don't know yeah. what these, these horses are. It's, it's, <laughs> what matter. are you? How do you cap? Is there a podcast on horse racing? I'm sure there is. Oh, yeah. The oh. Leafs drafted a guy. Whoa! But it wasn't televised, Steve. Whoa! <laughs> well, they've drafted a few guys today. Who did they draft? They drafted Arter. They have yet to draft a Canadian. Can't wait for the tweet about that. They're done. Arter. Aktiamov. <sighs> a- Aktiamov. Is it That's... another Finnish guy? Because they've drafted two Finnish guys before him, too. It is. He plays for Irbis Kazan in its Russian junior. The tallest player they have drafted, but he's a goalie. Oh, you should have mentioned that. They drafted a goalie. Fourth round, 106th overall, Arter Akhtiamov. Is, is the strategy here drafting Europeans because they're going to be playing over the next year and a bit, and Canadian players aren't going to be, are going to be exercising in empty rinks? You know, I th- no, I think it's still best player available, but there's going to be a lot of ties. And like, yeah. there's a lot of arguing. That's going what on. I mean. There's, yeah. yeah, there's a reason. There's a lot of people in the room, and I don't know. I kind of think that's a pretty decent tiebreaker, isn't it? Because half the guy who's going to be playing in a league. Well, and what's what's so interesting, and I forgot to mention this with like Emirov, for example. So you see his MHL numbers, and you see his KHL numbers, and they don't correlate, right? Didn't do didn't produce in the KHL, did really good against his peers. And you know he's going to have a bigger role in the KHL the next year. In June, you have to guess. Like, I, what are his numbers going to be like? You got to guess. This year, you get to cheat because mm. you actually get to see their progress going forward. This year, you got to see 10 games of Amirov in the KHL before picking him, and you got to see, wow, he's already got five points. So Arter Akhtimov, 
I guess they like what they've seen out of him previously. Mm -hmm. And they still do. I wonder how many teams were like, we love this guy. And then a dozen games into this current season, they're like, actually, he's garbage. (laughs) I'm sure it happens very quickly, right? Like it's teams move on from players a lot faster than you might think. So it'd be very interesting to see that actually uh, up close. You know, that's the thing that like, I wish we had more um, access to former executives and how quickly they move on from a prospect. Cause that's a very interesting question. I don't think you hear enough about uh, flyers have talked to the Winnipeg jets about Patrick line. Eh? <laughs> I would love that. Now would be pretty cool. We've seen some pretty big names get bought out. Mm-hmm. How far away are we from a James Van Riemsdyk buyout? I think we're a season away. Yeah. That's a shame. Because the Kyle Turris buyout happened today, and since we're on that subject, he's going to be paid $2 million a year for the next eight years. Hmm. That's tough. That's tough for the, for the Preds to, to, to take that, but they're doing it. When you look at what Kyle Turris brings, is that a guy we see in the NHL again? Is he a potential bargain bin fine for a team like the Leafs that's tight against the cap? Oilers, any other team, Vegas, who are obviously going to be tight against the cap, but it doesn't matter, but they're still going to have to have people on their roster. Like, what does Kyle Turris still have in the tank? Is he just overpaid for what he brings, or was he overpaid for what he brings, or is he washed? Uh, I saw Dom LeCision post some of his stats. Um, He's still okay. He's still probably NHL worthy. I don't think he's a guy you give much more than a mil to. Um, and the mill is basically for name brand and experience. Um, you know, I saw, uh, you know, some people getting chirped for, Oh, could he be a fit for the Leafs? He's just not what they need anymore. Mm. You're, you're already killing them for draft picks who are too small. This guy's a milk bag, you know, and, and you just don't need that in your depth. There, I, Jason Spezza, the, the re-signing is getting criticized by certain former pundits, you know, so what sure was Adam? Don't yell at me with those eyebrows. Don't yell at me with those eyebrows. I see you. Oh, not everyday player, Jason Spezza. Oh, yeah. Should we get, <laughs> should we talk about, I forgot about that. Should we yeah. talk about well, finish, like finish up the no, tourist conversation? Sense. Yeah. No, I just, yeah, yeah. anyway, he's, <laughs> you're not, he doesn't really fit the mold of your mm-hmm. typical depth guy is kind of the problem for tourists. So he's got to find a way to reinvent himself. And I don't know how he does that, but it's going to have to be for cheap, potentially even on the wing. Mm-hmm. Um, he's probably got some NHL hockey left in him, but yeah, like you said. I wonder if Edmonton makes sense. Scoring guy? Dude, it could. Cheap? It could. That would make sense. Put him on the wing. Like but Tyler Nashville, Ennis, right? I mean, we're seeing buyouts we would never see. If it wasn't for COVID, they're going to get dinged two mil against the cap each year for the next eight years. Eight you years must want it bad. That's a long time, man. Yeah, that is. is a very um, long time. One uh, thing. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Jesse. Go ahead. One thing um, in the NBA that happens is you see stars who are no longer at their peak. They become role players on good teams. So you'll see like Dwight Howard right now is a, Back with the Lakers on the on the Lakers and Carmelo is a role player when he was in Portland. So I wonder if that translates over to the NHL with a guy like Kyle Turris and maybe these other big like JVR you mentioned, a guys who used to play on the first line. Even the, even Corey Corey Perry these Corey past Perry. playoffs, you know, Tampa's if, whole these, right side on D. These if guys JV- who were once top five NHL players now being fourth liners, and maybe the Leafs should look at or just whatever team should look at going after those guys and making these stars, the 1 million guys down lower in the lineup. I'll tell you what, uh, if JVR was bought out this year, and I don't think he will be, but if he was, he'd be a great pickup for the Leafs. Just put him in front of the net in the power play. Mm-hmm. Second and just, power play. And that's the, so, the mental yeah, but, thing too, of just, I knew what it was like to play 22 minutes a night. And now I'm playing 12. I know what it takes to be the best, but now I'm going to do it in a limited role because my mm-hmm. skills is diminished. You know? That's why I like Wayne Simmons. If he's playing 12 minutes, do you hate Wayne Simmons? No. no, not at all. He was being asked in New Jersey and Buffalo to play a role that, frankly, you know, injuries have caught up with the guy. There's no question. 
But let, let's be honest. Wayne Simmons is, I think he's a valuable guy at 12 minutes a night. Just make sure it's 12 minutes. I wonder with, back to the Flyers for just a second, guys. I wonder if Shane Goss to spare uh, for Patrick Laine in some sort of swap makes a lot of sense. You know what I mean? Like it's sort of a- Interesting. Because Goss's bear is constantly in rumors. They are obviously chock full of great prospects uh, on defense in Philadelphia. And, you know, if you look at Winnipeg, that's a team that had their, as we keep saying, their defense was decimated. They've got Dylan DeMello. But Shane Goss's bear would be the power play quarterback you need. Would he not? Man, he's not He's not a stopper at all. Well, I am hating what I'm hearing out of Winnipeg. And I've been riding this bus for a long time. Trading a special talent like Patrick Line makes no sense. And what it sounds like they're after in exchange makes even less sense. They what want does a, it sound like they're after? They want a second line center and a and a and a second pair D. They can sign a second line center. For a 40 goal scorer in his early 20s? Am, am I am I high? Is am I yes, on drugs? What's probably. going on? Yes. Yeah, probably. It explains a lot. Yeah. It really does. It really you know, does. I, I, along that line, just as an aside, I had a friend oh. say to me, a friend who is a well-educated, well-esteemed person that Steve and Jesse knows, but I'm not going to say the name right now, say to me, uh, Andrew your friend, your friend Angle, uh, oh. is he like, what's he like? What's he actually like? And I said, oh, he's, he's great. Uh, and, uh, and he said, okay, okay. And then he met him and he's like, wow, he really is great. Like I wasn't, <laughs> it was like, cause Steve, people don't know what to make yeah. of you. So that's why I said when you're, when you are elevated emotionally like that, um, it's like, when you're like, am I drunk? Am I high? I know exactly what you mean, Adam. Cause I get it sometimes. They'll be Do like, is, oh, is, Steve, no. is Steve like his videos in real life? You know, is he just yes. yelling and emotional yes. all the time? Yeah. <laughs> and during yeah. the games for it's sure. It's a weird question to ask when they're just like, what is, what is Steve? He might also be the funniest text messenger I, I on the history, in the history of the planet. Like Steve, <laughs> Steve's text messages, which are very inappropriate are extremely funny. Um, mostly making fun of me, which I still get a good laugh out of. Just so. such an easy target. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> I just love it. And then, and then I'm sure the feelings mutual. Just oh god, it's Steve. And just, <laughs> but uh, um, sorry, continue. I can't, can't remember what I was going to. Oh, you were talking Zam- about line A and a 40 goal score for a second round or second line center and a second oh. pair defenseman. Yeah, which I think is just ridiculous for line A's uh, uh, value. Um, you're going to lose that deal. Also, I think I might have jumped the gun a little bit on. Van Reems like 7 million bucks is hard, but he still had 19 goals, 40 points this season. It's still, that's a lot of money for mm-hmm. that. Now what the one little aside I wanted to say is after the Zamboni driver video, um, cause that was a level I've never been at before. That video has like 600 and something thousand views. Um, like, the athletic therapist I started seeing for my back, like the secretary's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that video. Wow. You're a lot more <laughs> calm. <laughs> um, and a bunch of my neighbors who had never seen any of my videos before my, my one buddy, he was saying, he's like, man, my wife saw that Zamboni driver video. And she's like, called me over to the computer. And she's like, that's not our neighbor. That can't be. That's not him. It's a psychopath. <laughs> so, um, yeah, maybe I gotta dial it back. <laughs> no, <laughs> no dial it up, Steve. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Yeah, I'll go more nuts. Yeah. Akimov! I would have never taken him in the fourth round. <laughs> what? <laughs> Amirov? Trashov. Um trash. No. <laughs> no. No. That's, That's good. rude. That's no, it's good. not. It's rude. What's rude about that? What, what are you rude. It's rude. You're rude. Your face is rude. Uh, and one last thing before you go to a next topic. Dan Murphy, just over an hour to go. No qualifying offer for Stetcher yet. <laughs> Yo, that guy plays D and shoots right. And like I am Troy Stetcher. Horny. I, oh, what? I'm so hot for that. Give me Troy Stetcher all day. Hey, how about we just take Tanev and Stetcher? Oh. <laughs> and Vancouver's heart. Why not? I'm cool with it. The actual heart yeah, of the city. I think that would make out. the Leafs a load better. Even if you got TJ Brody and Stetcher, that's a swah. Ooh. Uh, now, under the radar here, guys, Anton Hudobin needs to be re-signed by the Stars. Or do you let him walk and maybe trade his rights and keep Ben Bishop, who's also very good, but aging? 
What do you do? And one of those guys had a better playoff than the other one. Right. By the way, I just want well, to say Hudobin is 34. Just throwing that out there. Jesse, what are you referencing? Uh, Bishop being out. Yes. Yes. For the bubble. Yeah. And one, of those, Kudobin, one of those guys had a playoff. Yeah. Kudobin <laughs> taking them to the uh, Stanley Cup final. So. Right? It's who is, your- is in the market for like the best. I would, I would call Hudobin the best platoon goalie in the league. You know what I mean? I can't call him a starter, even though I've been saying he's starter quality for the last month or so. I can't call him a starter when his career high is 41 games. <laughs> I just can't. Is there going to be a team out there crazy enough to offer him a starting job? I like I like what you're saying, though. I think that's a really good point. Yeah, there is going to be a team crazy enough to do it. Guy took his team to the sixth game of the Stanley Cup Finals. But, man, you're absolutely right about platoon goaltending. And the more I think about it, and I wonder how much – like if Andrew Berkshire can answer a question like this, Andrew, if you're listening, um, is there any uh, basis in fact about platoon goaltending being more effective? Is there any, I mean, because I don't know. I don't actually, I'm sure it depends on the quality of goaltending you have, but it sure seems like the Leafs have something pretty good in Jack Campbell. And I know I'm going to get a bunch of tweets saying, but Kyle Dubas said at the trade deadline that he expects Freddie Anderson to be the goalie. Well, what else is he going to say guys? Right. He I expect that until he gets a trade offer that goes, oh, I don't expect it anymore because he's gone. Oh, Rick Dollywall said Stetcher will not be qualified. Just to put a little bow. Wow. Crazy. Crazy. Let's go. Getting back to Ooh. Anton Hudobin, I think Edmonton can make a lot of sense. Hudobin and Koskinen, I like. Um, Calgary could make a oh, lot of sense. Calgary big makes a ton of sense. Big save Dave with Hudobin. That's um, a good, Buffalo, yeah. I'm going to throw in there. Buffalo. Um, uh, Kudobin and Ulmark. I don't know how much Kudobin would love that because I mean, after going to the Stanley cup final and being 34, you're probably going to want to go somewhere to win right away. Um, there there's options out there, Carolina, but what's so weird about Kudobin and Carolina is they sort of gave him his only starting chance of his career and it flopped. It didn't go well. Mm-hmm. So there is different team now. there. Different teams. It's extraordinarily different. And Rod Brandon Moore is your coach. And honestly, um, I feel like if there's any guy in the league that I want to play for, it's Rod Brandon Moore. Oh, one of the best, one of the most popular coaches in the league for sure. Mm-hmm. We'll win the Jack Adams very soon. Yeah. Fantastic. I mean, you, hey, you know who's uh, who needs a platoon goalie situation? Dallas. I think yeah. he stays. You think he stays? And why not? Why you know? Why not run it back? He is their Kawhi, right? What? Oh, so he's gonna frig off and what? demand a trade for a player no. who's? They no. call him instead of the claw. He's the Dobe. The do- no. Dobby. No. <laughs> no. Boo. no. Boo. Boo. Adam, that that play on words can go home. Boo! Boo. Oh. oh God. Oh. Oh. Uh, you know, instead of like fun guy on the t-shirts, they could just say magic guy. Cause they, his, his nickname is Dobby, the hell self from Harry Potter. You know? And he's a magical goalie and took them to the, almost the promised land. Jokes you have to explain are always the best ones. Wow. Adam, did, did, did you, <laughs> did you apparate that joke out of thin air? <laughs> what? See? Cause this, this is the part where I just stare into the camera for nine seconds. Like the ducks guy earlier. Is that a Harry Potter, Harry Potter reference? Okay. Yeah, it is. Apparition is uh, where you go, you teleport from place to place, but with a wand. Jesse. Okay, sorry. It's magic. Now I'm uncomfortable. All right, let's do the press conference, shall we? Okay. Okay. We got okay. a lot of questions here, so I'll try and be quick. By the I'll way, the Leafs drafted hearted. a goalie. We've done it. Artur Akiyamov at 106th. Are you, Adam, are you kidding? No. You mean the one that Steve just... <laughs> Oh, did Adam, we did like five minutes on like, that. Say a goalie? The, yeah. yeah. Oh, the okay. One, <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was another one. This is how not recognizable his name was. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> well, did you miss it the first time? I guess you got it now. Oof. <laughs> That's so All good. Right. All right. All oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, I was too busy. I was too busy building my next hot take to pay attention. I'm gonna. Okay. Pl- I'm gonna play this. <laughs> The Steve Dangle Press Conference. 
Uh, Steve, we should definitely point out that uh, last podcast, like less than 12 hours after you said that Jason Spezza wasn't an everyday player, uh, Kyle Dubas made the decision to bring him back as an everyday player. Yeah. Well, actually, Jesse, before we talk about that, the Leafs just drafted a goalie, Archer Akshim. (laughs) 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 Oh, oh, Adam, bless you. Um, Yeah, man. Uh, It's everything I've heard is uh, Spezza and Dubas have been uh, tight uh, since basically the bubble ended. He's wanted to come back since the bubble ended. Um, Frankly, I'm not sure what took so long. If all it was going to take is one year, 700 thou. Um, He was waiting for you to make a stupid comment. Yeah. yeah. It's really like Kyle Dubas is like, wait for it. Ah!" And like just dunk on him. Did Ah. it just to mess with me. (laughs) Um, Sure. And also, goes, did, have we talked about blouses, t- glasses, boom, <laughs> <laughs> game charts? <laughs> and then he says, "Fuck your couch." <laughs> I've been kicked out of better homes than this. <laughs> I'm Rick James, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, sorry. Oh, that, yeah, Spence is great. <laughs> that as overplayed as that skit, it is still the funniest five, oh, ten yeah. minutes in history. It's the best ever, uh, ever, ever, ever. Uh, sorry, uh, Jesse. Uh, the first uh, question comes uh, from okay. Lifelong Leafs on Twitter. Name. I thought this was a really good one. Name one guy you'd be surprised to see on the opening day roster that's still under contract. That's a good question. Sorry, one more time. So one guy who's currently on the lease that mm-hmm. Leafs that you'd be surprised is still on the team when the season kicks off. Something about the press conference waffles hates. I know she always around this time. Yeah. She always starts uh, starts just yapping at me. I waffles over there. I have a nagging suspicion Dubis is going to keep Janssen because I feel like he's tied to him for whatever reason. That's his guy. I think he really really likes that player. Um, you're sort of selling low, frankly, on the you know based on the season. Yeah, that he but had. I, I still think I, I there's a flaw in that one because he makes three and a half million bucks, man. I know what you're saying. So does Kerfoot. So I think I I think my answer is Kerfoot. I think he's more likely to deal Kerfoot. I think Kerfoot might even have higher value. But as I tweeted either yesterday or a couple days ago, I would much rather keep Kerfoot. Uh, I think he's more helpful because he plays center. I think he's more helpful on the penalty kill. He also helps on the power play, whereas Janssen, um, you know, it, they did use him sparingly on the penalty kill. They don't need more. The net front presence on the power play thing, I don't think you need him for the first or second power play anymore because Zach Hyman proved to be such a good option he did. On, the, on the second power play unit. Um, and they've tried him next to Matthews, and he's just not at that caliber. And the Hyman-Marner line seems to be there to stay. So then you relegate them to the third line, and I just don't think they can afford a three and a half million dollar third line winger. Great. Center, much easier to stomach. Winger, no. So that's my argument, but I my gut says Kerfoot's gone. My gut is that Janssen's gone. Um, and I think specifically for all the reasons Steve named, I think that, you know, and Steve, Steve is absolutely right. Whenever he says that Kyle Dubas has his guys and he's loyal to his guys and Mm -hmm. Janssen's one of his guys. However, this is the off season to be cold as ice and Kyle Dubas needs to be cold as ice and cold as ice means clearing that three, $3.5 million. And it doesn't matter. Does not mean that, um, if Andreas Janssen's on a very good team next year that he won't do well? It doesn't matter. Even if he's on a bad team, he might do really, really well. This is not a bad hockey player. It's a 20 goal guy. But at the end of the day, can you afford to have a three and a half or 3.25 or whatever it is, million dollar winger? Steve, you just said it. No. And so to me, you're not trading at a loss when you're losing Andreas Janssen because you gain that $3.5 million to spend elsewhere. And specifically, you can get a $2 million winger who I believe could probably add the same amount of value, or you might already have it in terms of production with Nick Robertson. Robertson, So can you put that $2 million towards Pat Maroon? Ilya Mikheyev is in there. Yeah, 100%. Well, and we don't know what he's going to be, but all the same, he exists. Troy Stetcher. (laughs) Troy Stetcher. Put it on defense. So that's, I'm going to say Andreas Janssen is not a Leaf next year. It's a great question. Next question comes from Zuzarov. They want to know, Jack Campbell has decent stats. 
For me, he's passed the visual test of playing well, especially with his athleticism. But he's never been given a chance at number one in his career. With Kudobin showing after finally getting starts, would it be wise to start Campbell more? Okay, I'm glad that question was a problem <laughs> until the last word. Yeah, they had me at the beginning. <laughs> they had me in the first half, not going to lie. Like, yeah, not uh, going to lie. Man, um, yeah, he played 26 games last year, which is the second most he's played in the NHL in his entire career. His career high is 31 with LA from the year before. He That guy had a 928? That's what I'm trying to say. On the 1819 Kings? You guys all think I'm crazy. He had a 928 on the 1819 Kings, and the Kings were still like, no, Jonathan, quick, guys. I, I, I don't get that. But... Um, Yes, they should start him more. They should absolutely start him more. That's why they got him this. Um, look, Curtis McElhinney, that was a unicorn. You got him off waivers, and he actually kind of like Hudobin hit his mid 30s and was like, actually, I'm unbeatable. And I'm like, but it's okay. You can still play me like 20 games, Babs. I don't care because I'm just the most low maintenance guy in the history of the planet. Um, it was a bad bet with Sparks and Pickard. Um, but yeah, McElhinney's a unicorn, yada, yada, yada. Um, Campbell's got to play at least 30 games next year, no matter who's the starter. Even if Freddie falters, it might be good to wake him up and let Campbell start for a week or two. I, I think if Freddie is, I think going into training camp, if Freddie is still with the organization and yes, I know Kyle Dubas said he would still be, but whatever, uh, there's going to be competition for the starter job. The, Make no mistake. Yeah. There will be the, competition for the starting job for the first time in four years. I, I've been talking about Freddie Anderson and the plethora of goods you could get, the all the assets you could get for him because of his unique uh, contract and he's only making a million dollars. The Matt Murray deal today just slapped that right out of me. A second and a fourth. Really? No, I'm not. I'm not uprooting my starting goaltender for that, guys. I just want to quickly announce that the Oilers have signed Jesse Puljujarvi, two-year deal. No, interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's no cool. terms released yet, uh, but he is back. That's a big one. Oilers That's... have got to be pumped about. Oilers fans have to be pumped about that. I gotta say, uh, I gotta say, Ken Holland, who we've criticized for certain moves, uh, he played that one right. Mm -hmm. Let him wait. Let him sit, and he cooled off. He was mad. And, I mean, Ken Holland's best argument was, look, it wasn't me. Yep. I wasn't yep. in charge. Yeah. And now he signs him. No, yep. good Good for the Oilers. You were never going to get the, – the most you were going to get in a pooley RV deal is Jesse pooley RV. And they got him. Congrats. Yep. yep. Fourth overall pick, by the way. <laughs> Do you guys want another signing? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Max Domi, his deal has come down. Oh, it's done. It's he two signed your deal worth ten million dollars. Wow. Who, who's this from? Uh, John Matisse. Okay. Wow. So five two million per. Five wow. million Good dollars, for right? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> okay. Big money. That's yes. big money. That's pretty good. It's not as much uh, as Dreger. you would have thought coming off Dreger of as well. seven. Dreger has oh. it as well. Yeah. I wonder how Dreger got it. Oh, that's big. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, wait. Who's his agent again? <laughs> Darren Ferris. <laughs> He's going to be first on Anderson, too. Uh, saying, not hey, surprised. Listen. listen. Not surprised. He's got a really good source. He's well, got I a line on chirping. Darren Ferris. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Like, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Like, yeah. There you go. Uh, last question. It's from... Tal Albrook, which discounted water boat are you getting on Amazon Prime Day? Mm. Shut up. <laughs> Kayak and paddleboard man on the Zoom call. How are you guys doing with those? I'm not even going to respond to that shit. I'm not no, going to I really, not I'm, be intimidated. I'm working on my core strength. I'm really, I'm really trying to engage those TA muscles. So I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking I want to stand up paddleboard. And at some point, I want to challenge Adam to a race. Have a sit-down kayak first. That we will never do. Hey, <laughs> no, Adam. That, okay, the number one 
watercraft that I need to get is a roof rack. <laughs> <laughs> so i can go True. rescue my own kayak which by the way <laughs> if i i can't even say to my friend like hey i'll just drive to your cottage and go get it because it's on an island <laughs> yeah you can't even oh, bring it no back way. you'd have it's to paddle it island. back oh, that's crazy I, it, well i don't know yeah i can't drive my car through the lake though getting there is is the big issue yeah yeah and last question jesse uh last question uh, give me a second. No, we we now. touched on this a little earlier, but we got a couple of these. Um, wh- this one's from MLG Philly. Mm-hmm. They want to know why is it that people don't understand that in the NHL you don't draft for current need, as opposed to uh, BPA, as another uh, Twitter person asked us, BPA uh, best player available. Uh, Just people are reactionary. Range. Yeah, yeah he's fair, which I get. Mm-hmm. because there's a chance with any player you draft, they might make the team out of camp. Oh, they might. And, and so it's like, well, if they, he makes the team out of camp, did you draft the right guy who could have made it? Like, it's sort of, um, I think we're used to two, like the two major sports that draft, the draft does the best in, in, in terms of excitement is the NBA and the NFL. Most of those guys in the first round are going to be in the league the next year. And they're going to be very good, you know, in a lot of cases, especially in the top 10 in the NFL, for instance, you know, some of these quarterbacks are going to start, right? It's, it's crazy. Um, and they're going to be the centerpiece of their team. Cleveland Browns every year have a new guy. Uh, it, you know what I mean? It's, it's sort of the, the thing that is always the story. So I think that there's probably a little bit of that play over. Um, and I also think, you know, like Steve said, reactionary. Uh, but we need this. How come we didn't get this? And you have to look at the draft if you're not in the top five differently. If you're in the top five, chances are a player could make it. But you look at Mitch Marner, who was drafted fourth. He yeah. played, he was two years before he made the NHL. It was Wasn't one, it? It was one, one year. full. One full year. And then he played in the Bab- O, right? Babcock was like, screw you. And, we're and Nylander, the Nylander was two. And uh, I mean, Matthews was right away, but Matthews was Matthews, right? He's well, putting, leaving Mitch Marner in the OHL got him his center who he yes. plays with <laughs> right yes he would have made the team just a little too good they might have won them an extra game or two and completely screwing them out of austin matthews right because they were the best last place team ever yep. um it's and the draft is optimism it's imagination so i mean you expect everything to go well and fix your team right away. And any defenseman you draft is going to be a good one for sure. We need defensemen and any defenseman that you draft, even though I've never watched any of them is going to help the team immediately. Some guy, the Leafs are going to get in the sixth round is going to be in the lineup tomorrow. You watch. He's got two months to make the team in January and he's going to be there. Yep. That's why like 2016, uh, outside of the Matthews pick, that should have been uh, big alarm bells for us because a lot of Leafs Twitter hated that draft. And I'm like, man, this is like this is when everyone thinks everyone's going to make the Hall of Fame, and you don't like any of these guys. Uh oh, yeah. have any of them made it? Korshkov, well, Matthews obviously, and I think Korshkov, and was Adam Brooks that year? Oof, not a strong year. No. Was not strong. Hey, uh, before we go, I just want to quickly mention a little shout out to Ed, Edward Van Halen. Uh, I'm wearing the shirt today. He passed away yesterday. One of the, well, in my mind, the greatest guitar player of all time, favorite band of all time. And to all the uh, Van Halen fans who regularly message me, because I do have like a group of people that just message me because they know I'm a Van Halen fan too. Uh, shout out to you guys and shout out to Eddie and his family. Unfortunately, we lost one of the greatest of all time. And I know, Steve, this doesn't really matter to you too much. Jesse, I know it doesn't matter to you too much. I'm listening. I, but, uh, it hurts me because you and I were in the middle of a text conversation when I saw I sad. that he died. And I'm like, oh, oh no. Like, did, I broke it to you, right? <laughs> you did. Steve was the guy that told me. I'm like, I'm going to be crushed by this. I was. Yo, it's weird because, like, I always sort of laugh at people when I'm like, you didn't know that person. Why are you so crushed? And then all of a sudden I was crushed. I'm like, now I get it. Uh, right. like there are very few people that I don't know that I'm like, this person really had an effect on my life. Van Halen and their music definitely did. So well, Adam, I'm, I'm going to heal. I'm going to heal your broken heart right now. What are you gonna do? The Leafs just drafted a big D. Oh, 
He's well, big and by D is big, my favorite. But yeah, it's isn't it for everyone, right? Big thick D. <laughs> okay, that's yeah. too much now. What? It's just... He's big and he's thick. And he's a defenseman. He's a big and, thick D. And his name is Willie William. No, it's not. And, no, it name? is William <laughs> Villeneuve. William Villeneuve out of the QMJHL. He is six foot one. <laughs> And he plays D. And he's big and he's thick. And, and he's, he's big. And he's, well, he's 175, really. but he's got room big. to grow. He's <laughs> a grower. Nope. He's, he's, oh, he's, nope. No. he's nope. currently a grower. All Not right. Grower. He All might right. be a shower one day. He's going to be both. Uh, I okay. Like, that seems I like, like a good place to. I like last <laughs> night where uh, they would, because they'd be sitting with their families, right? And they'd be like, oh, his dad's a big guy. And he'd be sitting next to him, and they'd be like, he's, "Oh, his dad's six five, standing next to him. He's gonna grow a little. Like he's he's six foot right now, but he's gonna get to like six two. Look at his dad. Oh, and look at his mom. His mom's like five nine. She's Yo, small. can you stop objectifying the man's like, parents? I stop know judging this guy. I know. I know the joke we just made was kind of inappropriate, but the way kids are talked about in general yeah. with any draft, stop talking about them like they're freaking horses." They are. I'm they are horses. Stuck. They like, call them horses. Berkey will get on television and be like, this guy's a horse. Yeah, they, they are. <laughs> like, yeah, that's what they're saying. That's a Mustang. Yeah, 100%. Mm. So anyway, uh, listen, uh, shout out to Big uh, Willie, our Big Blue D. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> nothing that we said was inappropriate. I don't no. know what your problem is. Uh, get your mind out of the gutter, Steve Dangle. Are we done? We're done. Are you upset? No. Well, oh, okay. Oh, da, 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 da. We cannot end until I get this out. Okay. <laughs> the Leafs just drafted Archer Akumov, a goalie oh, out of Russia. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's their oh, third goalie. What? Wow, I know. Oh, <laughs> shit. Uh, uh, dick move, man. Dick move. I'm kidding. <laughs> Willie move. Yeah. Big Willie D move. Willie move. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Hopefully, I'm going to say this for the second episode in a row. Hopefully, by the time we talk again, which will be Thanksgiving Monday in Canada, we actually have a brand new, crazy different NHL. Free agency is this Friday. We should see some trades before that. Uh, donate to Steve is already fundraising for Easter Seals. Jesse, thank you for that prompt. Please go to Steve Dangle's Twitter account for that. And thank you so much for listening to the show. We'll see you after Free Agent Frenzy. Archer Akumov. Trash them all. No! How dare you? Who would even say that? You're a piece of crap. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.